Football fans, welcome back to a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. We're doing a top 50 most valuable players in the NFL list, and numbers 20 through 11 came out today. Me and Alex are breaking down the rankings then. That turns into a good conversation. If you did a draft in the NFL, a lot of quarterbacks would go first. Who would be the very last quarterback to go before a position player was selected, and who are the position players in the NFL that may get picked before some of the second-tier quarterbacks? We're debating all of that and more on a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Let's roll, baby! (laughs) You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Ah, football fans, training camps are beginning or are right around the corner. You can start to smell the mowed grass. You can start to smell the pigskin in the air. Football is almost here, and we're getting ready to go with an awesome top 50 ranking of the most valuable players in the NFL. But with a twist in partnership with Bet Online, we're doing the top 50 most valuable players who move the betting line the most. So keep that in mind when we go over the list. Before me and Alex get into number 20, down to number 11. I do want to thank you guys for making the Locked On NFL Podcast your first to listen every day. Make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. You're going to find the Locked On NFL Podcast free and available everywhere, including the Locked On NFL YouTube channel. Subscribe there, smash the notification bell, and throw a thumbs up on the video if you're watching right now. But with all that being said, Alex, glad to have you back after missing last week. I know everyone's happy to uh, know that you are feeling better and ready to go. One of your guys is on this list. One of my guys is on this list, so it should be fun to break down. I'm just going to dive right into the rankings. At number 20, you have Trevor Lawrence. Number 19, you have Mac Jones. Number 18, you have Jimmy Garoppolo. Number 17, right? 20, 19, 18, 17, Ryan Tannehill. Carson Wentz at 16. Kirk Cousins at 15. Ryan Matt Ryan, 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 Matt Ryan at 14, Derek Carr at number 13. Is my math off here, Alex? Is that what we're learning is that I can talk football but not talk math? Is that basically what we have here? But then after Derek Carr, we have Kyler Murray. So that's kind of a list for you. Alex, I'm going to go back to the drawing board here and figure out where I lost one of the numbers. But based on those names in a row, what really stands out to you to start? Um. That, like, Jimmy Garoppolo's still a guy. Like, that. whenever I see Jimmy Garoppolo's name, it's like... Right. There are very few quarterbacks that I'm absolute truthers for, one of which is Jared Goff, as you well know. Um, mm-hmm. The Tyler Heineke project was very, was short-lived. But I'm kind of a Jimmy Garoppolo truther, a, a little bit, where it's like all the dude is win... It, it, all the dude does is win games when he plays football. That's true. And I, and I don't really understand. I know that he's you know, part of the machine that is Kyle Shanahan and the run first attack and all that stuff. And he underthrows Debo. Like I understand his shortcomings, but when you see Jimmy Garoppolo upwards towards the top, like, like he's not chosen below a position player, you know? So it's like people still look at him, a guy that can tip the scale of a betting line more than other quarterbacks in the NFL. Yet he's looked at as, like a, a a pariah, like he's never won a football game. At, like he's like he's yeah. Nate Peterman Peterson, <laughs> the old Nate Peterson five interception game. Never yeah. forget. Okay, so just to refresh here, the name I left out was Jalen Hurts, and he falls mm-hmm. in at seventeen. So Trevor Lawrence at twenty, Mac Jones at nineteen, Jimmy Garoppolo at eighteen, Jalen Hurts at seventeen, Ryan Tannehill at sixteen, Carson Wentz at fifteen, Kirk Cousins at fourteen, Matt Ryan at thirteen, Derek Carr at twelve, and then Kyler Murray at. 11. I got to tell you, I'm not really that upset about any of the rankings other than, and I I never go with the homer take when we do the Locked On NFL show, as I am the host of the Locked On Titans, but 
You look at Ryan Tannehill against Carson Wentz last year. The Colts have what everybody thinks is one of the top five rosters in the NFL. The Titans had the most injuries in NFL history, including losing their most important player, uh, in my opinion, based on the people who are still on the team right now for half the season. So the Colts have this incredible top five amazing roster on all these rankings. And Carson Wentz is a more valuable quarterback than Ryan Tannehill. And the Titans had the most injuries in NFL history last year, rostering 91 players. Where Ryan Tannehill had practice squad wide receivers, no A.J. Brown for a lot of the year, no Julio Jones for most of the year. You're telling me that with that incredible roster in Indy and Wentz being a more valuable quarterback, that Indy didn't make the playoffs and the Titans got the number one seed with the most players used ever with Ryan Tannehill leading the terrible practice squad offense? How in the world is there any justification for Ryan Tannehill being less valuable than Carson Wentz? Based on, it ju that just logically does not line up based on what we saw last year. I mean, the thing is that this is obvious. Again, this is from Bet Online, and this is – Top 50 players that move the line the most right. from 50 to 1, okay? Ryan Tannehill is not the first thing you think of when you think of the Titans offense. I agree. It's not. I agree. But neither Carson is the Colts. Wentz, With Carson, Carson Wentz, Wentz, it was Jonathan Taylor. Right. But not – like the thing is, we saw flashes from Jonathan Taylor last year. Absolutely. We yeah. didn't know. It's incredible. We didn't know – exactly what year two was going to bring. And then we saw what Jonathan Taylor was. Okay. This is like early on in the season. Yes. It ran through Jonathan Taylor. Okay. And the defense. But I think that this is more right. Like Derek Henry to me is the first person that I think of when I think of the Tennessee Titans. And I think that's the majority of people would say that even over AJ Brown. Like, yeah. yes. Derrick Henry yeah. is the king, okay? In Indy, I think the gap is tighter. Not anymore, obviously, because Carson Wentz isn't the quarterback there, and Jonathan Taylor had his year last year. But right. Derrick Henry has already had those years. Jonathan Taylor's first one was last year. So I still, when the season started, if, you, if we wanted to play a name association game, you said Indianapolis Colts, I say Carson Wentz. I wouldn't say Jonathan Taylor. I would now. But I wouldn't then. That may be the case, but the that is just our opinions and perspectives. What actually took place on the field last year is Carson Wentz with a better roster, according to all the all the national media, with a better roster, didn't get his team to the playoffs. And Ryan Tannehill, with the most injured roster and a lesser roster, according to the national media, got his team to the number one seed. So how can Carson Wentz be more valuable than Ryan Tannehill, whether it be football, whether it be gambling, whether it be the tiddlywinks, I don't care. It's it's preposterous is what I have to say about that. But with that being said, this ranking right here gets us into a fun conversation because these quarterbacks are kind of the second-tier quarterbacks in the NFL. They're not the top 10 guys. They're not the guys who are completely replaceable. Where within this list of quarterbacks, if you were doing just a Madden fantasy draft, would you start to consider taking something other than a quarterback? And who would that position player actually be? We're going to talk about all of that as we progress through the show. Before we get into it, I do want to tell you guys about the best tasting protein bars in the galaxy from our friends over at Built Bar. You get the best of both worlds with Built Bar. You get all the health benefits of a protein bar that you want. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber, guilt-free snack, or a healthy meal substitute. Either way, versatility is there. But the other aspect is is the most important, and it's the flavor. Because you've had protein bars that are chalky and waxy and hard to choke down, and you just get a, a, a crumb pile all over yourself when you try to eat them. Not with Built Bar. It basically feels like you're you're eating a candy bar. The flavors are absolutely delicious, including the new coconut brownie chunk puff. You get the marshmallowy puff consistency. You get the chunk consistency with the puffs on top. I love that. And coconut brownie is an all-time favorite flavor of the Locked On podcast hosts. I can tell you that. So uh, you're really going to enjoy what you find when you go to built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15. You're going to get 15% off your order. Once again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com.
Second segment here, Locked On NFL Thursday. He's Tyler Rowland from Locked On Titans. Five days a week, Titans news. I am Alex Clancy, Locked On Cardinals. You can check me out five days a week, free and available. Wherever we get your podcasts, all your Arizona Cardinals news on YouTube as well. Um, it was a fun conversation. I love riling uh, Tyler up about the Indianapolis Colts. It's just, you know, I mean, it's target practice for me at this point. Um, it's an undeserved love fest at all turns and points. Uh, Chris Ballard's 41 and 40 in the regular season. It's not that great. Are you done? You're not yes. done. I'm not going to even ask if you're done. So We're not done. So thank you, Bet Online, for that list. Uh, and, and you can check out 10 through 1 tomorrow with Chris Carter and your boy Q as they, as they bring it mm-hmm. home. We are going Top to 10. pivot out of the betting line world and look at real-life yes. application. And these next two segments are going to be fun. So, Tyler, this segment. Mm-hmm. And Derrick Henry is an interesting name. I know you and our fearless leader. It was at Rob number Jackson. 21 on the yeah. list. Number 21 on the list. Ahead of a red. couple quarterbacks. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is interesting. Ranked higher than a couple quarterbacks. Uh, I know that you and Ross Jackson, our fearless leader, went at it for running back rankings. Um, yes. I gave you a gerund uh, uh, a lesson, which, like, <laughs> when you say the wrong word, everybody's been through this. When you say the opposite word that you mean to say, which prove the, proves the other person's point accidentally, that's the good stuff. And that's something when Tyler went, follow him at Tic Tac Titans, follow Ross at Ross, or Ross Jackson, Nola, um, uh, Locked On Saints, and our, again, our immediate boss here, fearless leader, captain, my captain. So when we're looking at, let's take Derrick Henry, okay? I'm going to give you, uh, I'm gonna give you a, a, little, a little home cook in here. Let's take Derrick Henry, as you mentioned, was 20, 21st ranked in the top 50 most valuable players uh, in, uh, mm-hmm. in tied with actually moving the betting line, according to Bet Online. Which quarterback, and let's not say, you know, like Marcus Mariota or Davis Mills or somebody like that, where it's obvious who you'd take, like in a draft over, right. uh, over them for Derrick Henry. What's mm-hmm. the best quarterback? Who is the best quarterback? that you would still take Derrick Henry over to start a franchise. Let, let, let's do it that way. Well, and let me let me say this. I know that you said it's some home cooking, but I got to tell you, it, it went, in our next conversation where we talk about these position players who may be valuable enough to go over some of these quarterbacks, Derrick Henry would not be at the top of my list. Derrick Henry wouldn't even be in the top 10 of players that I would take over some quarterbacks in this conversation. So so think about a guy like Aaron Donald. Let's just, for the sake of things, yeah. replace Derrick Henry with Aaron Donald's name. And I'm looking at these quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones, Jimmy G, Ryan Tannehill, Carson Wentz, Kirk Cousins, Matt Ryan, Derek Carr, Kyler Murray. For me, where I start to really think about one of these top-tier position players, the line for me is after Derek Carr. So Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, I would say, is the best quarterback that I would take a a, a position player over, I guess, if you want to phrase it that way. Derek Carr is, once you get past Derek Carr, I look at Matt Ryan, Ryan Tannehill, Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, Jimmy G. That's a tier to me. That's a group of guys that, in my opinion, I'm not certain that a great year out of a Tua a great year out of a Baker Mayfield, a great year out of a Jameis Winston. If you have a team that's quality enough to win the Super Bowl, that means your roster is really, really good. Yeah, none of the Jimmy G and Baker Mayfield and those and Tua, they're they're not gonna they're not going to be good enough to overcome if you don't have a great roster. That that's the reality. So if you have a great roster, I'm not so certain that Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, Ryan Tannehill, Jimmy G gives you a significantly better chance than Baker Mayfield or Jameis Winston. So to me, I think Derek Carr is a step, uh, just slightly a step above that. Maybe, maybe a slightly step above. Kyler Murray definitely is. I mean, I, I could, with no uncertainty in my heart, say, I would not take any of those guys over Kyler Murray. If Kyler's on the board, I'm taking the quarterback. Derek Carr is right there on my bubble, but I know for certain I would take an Aaron Donald or some other names that we're going to discuss in our next segment. I would take some of those names over Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, Ryan Tannehill, Jimmy G, etc. So yeah. that, I mean, that my line is is Derek Carr and Matt Ryan. 
I, after Derek Carr, if he's not there, I, I'm taking Aaron Donald over over Matt Ryan. I'm a Derek Carr truther also. Because I, I don't agree with you there. I think Derek Carr is like win above replacement or floor or, or whatever, however you want to gauge it. I think mm-hmm. – he gets kind of a bad rap. Yeah, they, they lose some bad games. Well, but... I ultimately said I'd take him over the – so I, I, yeah, I'm with you, you at the end of just more consternation. Side. Come on. Right, bro. right, right, right. I think my line is any of the second-year guys, I'd take any of the second-year guys. They haven't proven anything yet. Like, I, yeah, I, I would take yeah. I would take any – like, yeah, Mac Jones, Trevor Lawrence, not yet. You know, if we're talking That's kind right of my now, point, though. I, yeah. I would take all those guys – I would I would take an Aaron Donald and wait and get one of those guys if I could over that mediocre tier of of older veteran guys. Yeah, I mean the the thing is like with with Derrick Henry, he's not getting any younger. Like this is one of the this sure. is the time where it's like he's yeah, not running there back yet. Isn't important enough. Uh, right. that, that's why I want you know running backs just not. Well, know. I mean neither is Aaron Donald. Like listen, Aaron, I know he's thirty one. Well, that's where we disagree. Running back and interior defensive linemen have different positional values entirely. I think they're at opposite ends of the spectrum. Running back may be low kicker at some uh, in the coming years in terms of money and value. So Aaron Donald's way more valuable than than Derrick Henry in my opinion. And he's like the DK Metcalf of interior defensive linemen, right? Or DK Metcalf is the wide receiver. Aaron is the Aaron Donald of wide receivers. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, it's just interesting because more quarterbacks are so what. I'd give him more credit than that. I'm DK saying, Metcalf I'm is like a, a, lab a 10 status. to 15. Oh, I'm well, yeah. Just, lab status. I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah that's true. Stuff. Aaron um, Donald is a gorgeous man. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think I would still take Kirk Cousins over Derrick Henry. Um, it, okay. It's just, it's icky to say, but Kirk Cousins is consistent as gravity. Okay. He's going to give you the right. numbers he's going to give you and not more, not less. That's exactly what it's going to be. He's going to look like the MVP of the NFL three games a year. And it may be against Green Bay. And they may see Green Bay on the road. Like, it's not like right. <clears throat> it's not like it's just against bottom dwellers. Like, And then yeah. he's going to throw the ball 14 times, complete it for 78 yards, and a touchdown. And they're going to lose by six scores. It's like, what the hell are we doing here? So, I mean, I, but yeah, Derrick Henry's right there. I still, I would still take Matt Ryan. I would still take, I, so let me answer the question that I asked. I think for me, taking out the, the two-year guys, I think it starts with, like, we talked about Jameis. We, I think it's mm-hmm. around, like, the Jalen Hurtsy, but not there right, yet. 17. Jalen Hurts is my fringe, mm-hmm. even okay. though Jalen Hurts has shown me last year, like, oh, I, you know, I call him the oh, my God moments. We saw some of them from him, especially with his arm talent. Like, okay, I mean, if this is the trajectory, holy crap, he's going to be a Pro Bowl. But I think right around there as of now is where I'd keep him. So uh, that's the story. Alex Clancy, Tyler Rowland, locked on NFL Thursday. We've the betting line portion of this. But the final segment's going to be fun. I'm going to let Tyler take the reins. We're going to be doing a little, like, weird hybrid fantasy football draft, but not fantasy yeah. football next. Locked on NFL Thursday. Alex Lance and Tyler Rowland. Keep it locked. Bring it back for the bottom of the map. We are back for our final segment of the Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. We talked about number 20 down to number 11 in the Bet Online Locked On most top 50 most valuable uh, players according to the betting line. And I guess like you were saying earlier, I mean, think about Derrick Henry being you know ranked at number 21, the first non-quarterback position player, I do believe. It is Betting lines are kind of the public eye. I always tell people when they bring up betting lines and and arguments and sports arguments that Vegas isn't trying to be as accurate as possible. They're trying to entice even betting on both sides, which is about playing to public perception. So that's my small rant on that. But we talked about that rankings. We let that lead us into a conversation about uh, which quarterback would kind of be the cutoff in a a Madden-type fantasy draft for when you'd start to take non-quarterback players my beginning point was a little higher than Alex's, but this question will will get the same opinion from us, most likely, I would imagine. Maybe not, though. What position player is that that you would consider over those quarterbacks? So if, if I would take a position player over Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, Ryan Tannehill, Jimmy G, what position players would it be? And Alex, I'll get us started here. So position players I'd take, over that set of quarterbacks, 
Aaron Donald is one. I think he's the most valuable non-quarterback in the NFL. Maybe it's not publicly sexy or whatever, like Derrick Henry or the wide receivers, but I think that's football-wise, real football value. Give me Aaron Donald over anybody other than quarterbacks. Um, I would say Trent Williams, who is probably the most dominant offensive tackle in the NFL right now, is in that conversation. Um, Devontae Adams, I would put in that conversation. And uh, Miles Garrett and TJ Watt, I would put in that conversation. Some other guys, Quentin Nelson, Darius Leonard, Micah Parsons, maybe. But I know for sure Aaron Donald, maybe Travis Kelsey, Aaron Donald, Trent Williams, Devontae Adams, uh, TJ Watt, Miles Garrett, those five guys. I'm taking those five guys over Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, Ryan Tannehill, Jimmy G, for sure. Yeah, um, I would remove Devontae Adams from that list personally because we don't know. We don't know chicken or the egg. I feel it's like probably I know. both. I feel like I know he's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, he got ninety <laughs> percent of the target share, so like right, he got all right, of the right. targets. And yes, he had to get open, but the scheme, the way he, so it's a mixture of scheme and talent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Remember, because Jordy Nelson is my favorite. And what Rodgers likes to do. And you're about to say it. What Rodgers likes to do throwing wise, it fit perfect. Yeah. So, like, it, 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 it's never more. Like, I remember when Jordy Nelson was their wide receiver one. He was my yes. first wide receiver ever for fantasy purposes. Okay. Fantasy football purposes. Devontae Adams couldn't catch the football during his first year and a half or two years. Jordy Nelson leaves. He becomes a top wide receiver. The, the one thing that that's all you need to know about the, the Green Bay scheme and offense was. It was the it was the motion out to the to the left for Devontae Adams and then a speed motion to the other side. They hike the ball right after Devontae Adams passes the center and he's wide open on the other side for a touchdown. We see it, we saw it countless times, and it's like, oh, it's coming, it's coming. I know this is coming, and he's wide open. So it is scheme, it is Devontae Adams, it is Aaron Rodgers. I'm not taking away from talent of Devontae Adams whatsoever. He's an absolute specimen. He's incredible at his craft. But right. if it's like 35% Aaron Rodgers and you go to Derek Carr and it's not that, you can't see the same numbers, especially with the other weapons that they have in Oakland right now or in uh, Vegas right now. So I would remove him. I think Aaron Donald, I think Miles Garrett should be number two. Like Trent Williams is 100 years old. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah. that's all. That's so fair. Rodgers that's fair to that, me. You know, and he's like, th- because they run the ball so much, it makes him look a little bit better. And I know that he is one of the better left tackles in the league. I get that. Yeah. TJ Watt, yeah. I'm trying to think of offensive players. like Garrett I, Watt and Aaron Donald are, are my top three if I had to like actually rank everything. Because I believe, just as a football philosophy, that you, you need a quarterback. But outside of that, pass rush is the most important thing you could possibly have, whether from the interior, um, like Aaron Donald or like Warren Sapp with those old Tampa Bay defenses. Uh, or from the edge. Either way, you have to have pass rush. It's the second most important thing in football, in my opinion. Yeah, so. I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, there's a couple different ways you can look at this. Like, if we're looking at just next year or the next two years or something. Sure, like dude, that, I mean, I think that's fair. Because Christian McCaffrey should be in this list, but he's injury prone, you know? Like, another name yeah. that I thought of was Alvin Kamara because he's like, yes. he's an everything guy. Yeah. He's an everything guy. And not, it's not not potent, but there's a lot of NFL players that don't have a nose for the end zone from the running back position. They just don't. And there are other yeah. guys that are like, they just, they're like, how the hell did he get in? Alvin Kamara is small. Okay. Yeah. Kamara. What is it? I know. I'm never going to say he it. doesn't I even know. I he, does, he said you could do either way when he was a rookie. So whatever. I like flexibility. I like fluidity. Yeah. I like flexibility. Yeah. So, but I was Alvin Kamara. The reason why he's like an honorable mention, because he is offense. Just go put him somewhere and he'll produce. He's one of the best pass catching, like pass catching, not screens, best, right. best run routing pass catching running backs we've seen in the last 20 years. Okay. He's a new age version of the Dalian Tomlinson in some capacity. He's great at running the ball. He can run between the tackles, even though he's smaller. He's so fast. Like that's when he's healthy. He's, he's a guy that other teams definitely have to account for. And like, I need Jonathan Taylor to do it again. Do it again. Do it. You did it great. Now go earn your second contract before they try to screw you over. Go do it again. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's going to touch the ball so much. Hopefully it's not an Arian Foster situation, like I call it, where touch the ball 300 right. times, three years in a row. That could be all she wrote, folks. Ask Christian McCaffrey. Like, 
Yeah. That's why Alvin Kamara, I would almost choose over Jonathan Thomas, uh, uh, Jonathan Taylor, because Kevin Kamara just in space is just an absolute spectacle. Right. You know what, Alex? Every single Thursday we get on here and we tell the listeners that I like to be segmented. I like to have notes. I like to, you know, be fully prepared to the nines and blah, blah, blah. While you have a radio background, you're kind of used to, you know, improvisation, going through, finding topics. You're rubbing off on me, man. I just thought of a great topic. Would you rather have a big body back like a Derrick Henry, Jonathan Taylor, Najee Harris, guy like that? Or would you rather have the Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, uh, Austin Eckler type back if you had to start? Because there are, there are pros and cons to both of those. We won't have that discussion now, but just a little bit of a preview for you guys of how these ideas are just constantly sprouting up for us here on the Locked On NFL Look podcast. But uh, either I know, dude, you're rubbing off on me in a good way. We're in here. We're good to go. I'm, I'm, I'm getting that, that improvisational side we'll to me that. that you've been working on. We'll hit that next week as, as camp starts to ramp up. Uh, Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals, five days a week. All your Arizona Cardinals news, free and available yes. wherever you get your platform. And on YouTube, Tyler Rowland, Locked on Titans, five days a week. Tennessee Titans news. And whatever Indianapolis Colts hatred you can choke down, the Chris Ballard list, Locked on Titans. Um, yeah, we make up Locked on NFL Thursday. Thanks for making Locked on NFL your first listen each and every day. Make sure to not only check us out next week, on Thursday, but tomorrow, check out Chris Carter and your boy Q. They're going to break down 10 to 1 of the bet online slash locked on NFL top 50 most valuable players list as it pertains to moving the betting line. Alex Lancey, Tyler Rowland, we will talk to you next week.